So you just got Ableton 11 and you're completely overwhelmed by the interface and how it works. So in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to start making music in Ableton 11. So let's get started. Hey yo, I'm Alex from Meta My Music and with this channel, it's my mission to help musicians produce themselves by developing their mindset, expanding their creativity and connecting to their inner artist in a deeper way. All right, so I'm going to go over everything you need to know in Ableton 11 to start making music now. So let's get started. All right, so you just installed Ableton 11. Next step is to open it and it should look something like this for you. And don't worry if it looks a little bit lighter colored, you can change all that in your preferences, which is where we're going to start because there's a few things that we need to set up to get started. So to get your preferences, you can go in the top left corner, hit live and hit preferences or you can learn the hotkey right now, which is command comma on Mac, and it'll pop open your preferences. All right, so first and foremost, you can have some fun with the look and feel of Ableton. You can change some of the settings here, but let's start with the color. If you wanna change the theme, you can go to light, mid light, or you go mid dark, or if you're like me, you like it real dark. All right, so next we're gonna focus on this audio tab and we're gonna set up your audio interface. So if you have an audio interface, you're gonna to wanna to go to the audio input device section and select your audio interface. So I'm using this Sapphire Focusrite. So if you don't have an audio interface yet, you can actually just go ahead and use the built-in microphone and built-in speaker of your laptop and or computer to get started. All right, that's amazing, that's set up. So next we're gonna to wanna to focus on setting up your MIDI controller inside of Ableton. And I actually have a whole other video dedicated to that that you can check out on the screen. So regardless what kind of MIDI controller you have, if you have like an Akai Mini, or if you have a Roly Blocks, or if you have some other MIDI controller, there are literally hundreds of MIDI controllers you can choose from. So whichever it is, we can set it up. So we're gonna to wanna to focus on the Link Tempo MIDI tab and we're going to want to select the MIDI controller that you have. All right, I have a lot of MIDI controllers going on here, but we're gonna focus on this Roly Songmakers kit. So all I would do is click this drop down menu, find my MIDI controller, which is Roly Blocks, click it, and then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your input for your MIDI controller has track and remote checked off. All right, so once you have your MIDI controller selected from the control surface drop down menu in Ableton, you can go ahead and push your controller to test if Ableton is actually receiving MIDI. And if you focus in the top right hand corner over here, every time I push my keyboard, there's a little orange box that pops up. So that means that Ableton is receiving MIDI from your MIDI controller. All right, so with that initial setup complete, let's go ahead and start making some music. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start building out musical parts for a track here. And as I start building this out, I'm gonna start to teach you some of Ableton's features. All right, so once you're in Ableton, it should automatically open up to this view, which is called Session View in Ableton. And this is one of the things that makes Ableton so unique and so powerful is Session View. And what makes Session View so special is you can actually trigger and loop various clips or loops of various tracks that you have going on in Ableton and work with them that way. <laughs> So if you're familiar with most other DAWs, you're probably more accustomed to this type of view, which is called arrangement view in Ableton. And this is more of a traditional timeline where you arrange your musical ideas from left to right in a time bound structure. All right, but in Ableton, you can make music using any of these two modes, which is what makes it super powerful. All right, so you can actually toggle back and forth between these two views by clicking this little icon on this right hand side, which will make you switch views or you, alternatively, you can also just hit tab to switch views back and forth. Isn't that dandy? Well, I'm feeling a little bit adventurous today and I wanna show you some of the powerful things you can do with session view. So let's go ahead and work in session view. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start creating some musical parts to build a track here. And as we build these parts out together, I'm going to showcase some of Ableton's features as we go along. All right, so to start out, let's load up a drum kit to get a beat going. So to load up a drum kit, you're gonna wanna go to Ableton's browser and Ableton's browser window is this whole section, all right? And if you notice, there's a little arrow up here. 
you can toggle this on or off by clicking this arrow. And that's kind of a common theme with Ableton is that you can toggle any of these menus with an arrow typically, which is super handy for navigating your screen real estate. <laughs> All right, so with this browser open, what we're gonna do is go to the drums section, okay? And Ableton has a bunch of amazing instruments built in. You can also use third-party instruments and plugins, but to get started, we're gonna just use what's found inside of Ableton because it's awesome and it's super easy to find and use in the browser. All right, so once you have this drum folder open, you'll notice there's all these kits to choose from. There's a lot of kits. This is crazy. All right, so we're gonna choose one to start. And all I'm doing is clicking all these various kits to audition them. That's a vibe. All right, so once you've found a kit that you like, you can simply click and drag it onto a MIDI track. And voila, just like magic, it loaded onto that track. And I have it on my push right now just to make it easier. So each of these pads on my controller are mapped to a different aspect of this drum kit. So if I hit one of these pads, it's going to play a piece of this drum kit. So there's my kick. So there's kind of a snare sound. There's a louder snare and so forth. All right, and alternatively, instead of dragging it, you can also just select a track and then double click the instrument and it will also load it onto that track. All right, so once the instrument is on your track, you'll notice that something appeared in this bottom section of Ableton. And this is what is called your effects rack. Pretty cool. And you notice that in the bottom right-hand corner, there's another arrow here, right? You can collapse and open this menu just like your browser. And the effects rack is actually used to put instruments, to put effects, to put MIDI effects and anything of that nature. So you'll see that my drum kit has been loaded here and it's represented to me on this drum rack. So each of these cells has a drum sound in it. And if you're using a MIDI controller, you can start hitting MIDI and it'll start playing some of these sounds. <laughs> Obviously this drum kit has some samples built in, which is cool, but here's some more traditional drum sounds. Isn't that amazing? And you'll also notice that it loaded onto my push as well if you have a pad type controller. But hey, if you don't have a MIDI controller yet, you can still trigger MIDI using your computer keyboard. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. First of all, I'm gonna get my face out of the way and you simply wanna go up here, click options and enable a computer MIDI keyboard. Alternatively, you can actually hit this piano logo button in the top right hand corner as well. So with this enabled, you can actually start playing MIDI with your computer keyboard. All right, so now that we have a drum sound loaded onto our track and ready to go, let's go ahead and record a beat but before we go ahead and start doing that, let's adjust the tempo. All right, so you can find the tempo right over my head on the screen in this top left-hand corner. And right now it's set to 120 beats per minute, which is the speed of the track right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this up to 130 by double clicking, typing in 130, hitting enter, and now we're at a slightly faster tempo. And next we're gonna to wanna to turn on the metronome to actually help us stay in time when we're laying down our beat. So you can find the metronome right here and simply just click this on and now there'll be a metronome every time you hit space bar or play. So I can show that to you right now, just hit space bar and there's our metronome. All right, and before we start recording, always make sure that your track that you wanna record, so here's our drums, is record enabled. So make sure that this is turned on and that will enable you to record to that track. And finally, before we get started in session view, we really don't have to worry too much about this big record button at the top that you find beside the stop and play button. Uh, we're more so gonna focus on these tiny record buttons per clip because we're gonna be recording per clip in session view. All right, so let's go ahead and record a loop.
All right, so I just recorded a loop. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this metronome off by hitting this button once again and just hitting space bar. And you'll notice that this drum beat will just keep looping over and over and over, right? And this is great for when we want to keep adding ideas on what we've been building because everything will keep looping. Isn't that awesome? So to stop playback, just simply hit spacebar again. And to start it again, just hit spacebar. But if you didn't get the beat that you wanted or if you messed up or something, well, we can fix that very easily. So how to do that is to double click on this clip. Try saying that three times fast. All right, so double click on this and this will open up your clip view. And you'll notice that in this clip view, we have MIDI data, which is what I programmed when I was playing my drum kit. And we can see all the MIDI data here and we can go in here and adjust anything that we want. I could click a note and move it. I could add new notes by double clicking, all that kind of fun stuff, right? And on this, what is called the piano roll, which is right here, it actually showcases all of the sounds you have loaded on your drum kit or whatever instrument you have. Here's a little tip, there's this little headphone button that if you click that button, you can now audition all of your sounds by clicking on the piano roll. So those are all the sounds in my drum kit. <laughs> A lot of cool samples and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and pencil in some of these sounds. All right, so I added in that kind of floaty piano sound by putting this MIDI note in. And I added these kind of bass hits to match up with this kick drum. So let's say I didn't like the timing of this or if your timing was off, what you can do is hit Command A to select all of your notes and then right click and hit this, what is called quantize. And quantize will actually snap your notes to the grid so that it is exactly in time. So let's go ahead and quantize that. You'll notice that the notes shifted once I hit that button. So now let's listen to the beat after I've quantized it. All right, that's amazing. That means you can vibe out and get drum ideas in, get melodic ideas in and fix them afterwards. But you can also pencil in your performances from a MIDI clip as well. If you ever make a mistake or want to revert the action you did, you can always hit Command Z to go back and you'll notice that the notes shifted back or you can find that same undo function from edit and then undo draw notes or you can redo something. So I'm gonna redo that quantize that I just undid. All right, so next let's add in another instrument on top of our drum loop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close this clip view by hitting this little arrow down here just to give myself more space. And we're gonna go to our browser and you'll notice that in your browser, you have a sound section. So if you click the sound section, you'll notice that there's all these different kinds of sounds built into Ableton. So we're gonna go ahead and choose one of these but you can also select third-party plugins and instruments you might have installed by clicking this plugins folder and finding them there. But for this video, let's just stick to what's built into Ableton. So I'm gonna go in these sounds and I'm going to go into pad and I'm going to find a pad I like. So again, just click around on these presets to find a sound you like. So let's go with this pad. So what I'm gonna do this time is just select the track that I want. So I'm gonna select this MIDI track and I'm gonna double click on this pad and you'll notice that it loaded into our effects rack down here. So let's hear what that sounds like. All right, so let's see if we can vibe out an idea that fits over this drum loop because there's a little bit of melodic information with that sample in our drum loop. All right, so there's something usable in there. And let's say you're just vibing out, not worried too much about making mistakes, is what you can do is double click on this clip and bring up everything you just played. And I remember there was something towards the end that I liked. So I'm going to take this little arrow, which is how long our loop is, and I'm going to move it to start later. So 
right, so that part of what I played works really well with this drum beat. So all I did was reduce the loop size to just be looping what actually works. And I'm going to zoom in here by holding Command and scrolling up, and I'm going to move this note so that it actually fits inside this window so that it's triggered when I start the loop. And another handy feature inside of Ableton is this fold button that you'll find over your piano roll. If you hit this button, it'll actually fold your piano roll only to the notes that are being used. All right, so I went ahead and edited some of the notes, moved them around so that it fits a little better. So once you're done editing your loop, you can go ahead and close again your MIDI clip view by hitting this arrow and giving yourself a little bit more room. So let's say I wanted to add some ambience to what we just created. Uh, let's go ahead and add an audio effect on top of what we just created. So to get to your audio effects in Ableton, we're gonna to go to our browser and you'll notice there's an audio effects folder. So I'm gonna click that audio effects and we're gonna go into delay and loop. And we're gonna find, let's use the spectral time effect since it's new to Ableton 11. And I'm gonna grab one of these presets, freezer fading. So to add this onto the loop we just created, I'm going to click this and drag it onto the track with that piano motif. So let's listen to how this sounds now. So that really changed the sound, right? It completely changed the vibe of that sound. But what I can do is actually adjust the dry wet knob, which is actually the amount of the effect that's going to affect our sound. So I'm going to turn this down to maybe 30% or so, and listen to this. All right, it adds that kind of cascade, that vibiness, vibrations. All right, we got two tracks in just a few minutes. We're on fire, let's keep going. So next, let's go ahead and add a new MIDI track with a piano sound and get some chords on top of this. All right, so to add a new MIDI track, you simply just right click anywhere in this area and insert MIDI track, okay? Easy as that. Alternatively, you can learn the hotkey, which is Shift Command T, and that will also create a MIDI track, or you can go Create and Insert MIDI Track from the top menu as well. So many paths to get to the same destination. All right, so with this MIDI track created, I'm gonna go ahead and find a piano sound. So we're gonna go back to our sounds. I'm gonna click sounds. I'm going to close this menu and we're gonna go to piano and keys. And I'm gonna go ahead and find maybe a grand piano or something and drag this onto this MIDI track. And now I have all right and as you start playing new tracks you might notice that some tracks are more quiet than others and this is where you can actually use this volume fader to adjust the individual volume of your tracks all right so i'm going to do that i'm going to turn down the drums i'm going to turn this down and we're going to bring up the volume so here's our drum kit other track I'm just clicking and dragging this fader all right so once you have some levels set let's go ahead and add some chords on top of this let's have some fun Sweet, let's listen back to it. All right, so once you have ideas recorded, keep in mind that Ableton always shows you what's going on in terms of the track and the device you have in the bottom left corner here, right? So these are all the parameters of this grand piano. So if I wanna listen to how I'm changing these parameters on this grand piano, I'm gonna hit this solo button 
And now only what I just recorded will be played back. And now if I change some of these parameters, right, it changes the sound. So I'm gonna add more reverb. Right? And if I hit solo again, it'll bring me back to everything that we have going on so far. But let's say we wanted to add another effect on top. Again, we're just gonna go to our audio effects in our browser. And this time let's go to something else. Let's go to modulation, one of my favorite. And let's go to phaser flanger. Let's go with Phaser Particle Alliance, just because it sounds so awesome. So to add this effect to your device, simply just click and drag it beside your device, and you'll notice that it adds itself onto the chain of your effects rack. And basically everything in your effects rack will feed into each other. So my instrument, which is right here, is being fed through this phaser and so on and so forth to anything else you add in the effects rack. So let's listen to how this sounds in solo. So again, I'm gonna turn down the dry wet just so it's more subtle. Play around with that. And keep in mind, if you wanna jump back to your MIDI clip view, simply just double click on a clip and it will open up that menu and you can toggle between your effects rack and your clip view at the bottom right hand corner here. You'll notice that there's two tabs. You can click back and forth to alternate between these or you can hit shift tab to go back and forth. All right, so you can adjust all of these parameters of your effects and your devices and your instruments and there's so much you can do with Ableton. It's like staring into infinity and it's amazing. All right, so the last track that we're gonna add to our song is going to be some external audio. So you'll notice that a couple of these tracks are what are called audio tracks, and these tracks are used to record external audio. So we can't actually trigger sound from these tracks with our keyboard or our MIDI controller. We have to record external audio. So you might have an external synth, you might have an electric guitar, or a microphone like I have plugged into your audio interface and we're gonna record some audio. All right, so I'm gonna actually record this handy little guitar through my microphone into Ableton. So if you look here on an audio track, it's saying audio from external in input one. So what this means is that Ableton is looking at input one on my audio interface for signal and my microphone is plugged into input one of my interface, okay? So that's why we see a little green input signal coming in here, and we are set to record my guitar. So before recording, again, make sure that you hit record enable. When you're recording an instrument, you wanna make sure that it's in tune. So we're gonna go into audio effects, utilities, tuner. I'm gonna smack that onto this audio track, and we're gonna tune this guitar real quick. All right, so let's record something super simple with this guitar. All right, awesome, 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 awesome vibrations. All right, so now that we have that recorded, let's double click on this audio clip and see what happens. So we notice that there's no MIDI notes here. There's no piano roll. And that's because we recorded an audio file. We didn't record any MIDI data. So let's give this a listen. Bring this in so that the loop ends right when I finished playing and doesn't loop longer than the length of the part I played. So you'll notice that every time I hit play, all of the parts we've added keep looping over and over. And that's the nature of Session View. All right, so the beauty of Session View is that you can keep creating variations of different loop ideas and different parts, or you can actually 
copy parts to another clip section. So I could drag this, click here, hold alt and drag it here or right click, copy, click here, paste. And you can create these various scenes that trigger at the same time. So you can actually hit this stop button to stop all clips. All right, and Ableton makes this super easy to trigger things in time. So it's super powerful for live performance or getting creative with your compositions and mix and matching your different ideas. All right, all right, so now we're going to trigger our clips and record it into the arrangement view. Okay, so first we're gonna stop all our clips by hitting this button. And then we're gonna hit this big red record button and we're just gonna trigger clips and it's going to record our clips into arrangement view. All right, so let's give that a shot. All right, now that we did all that, what happened? Well, watch this. All right, so let's hit tab to jump over to the arrangement view and hit this little red play button right here. And you'll notice that everything we triggered is represented in the same time sequence inside arrangement view. How amazing is that? And typically once I've triggered clips into arrangement view i'll now stay in arrangement view until i finish the song <laughs> all right so once you're in arrangement view you can see that all your tracks are represented in rows rather than columns and you can go in here and actually drag out the parts you've recorded to have them go longer or shorter or you could copy this and paste it over here let's say you wanted that and you can do all sorts of fun things and arrange your song in a powerful way. You'll also notice that as you click on all of these individual tracks, that your devices still appear in the bottom section of Ableton along with your clips, which is super powerful. So you can adjust all this stuff as much as you want. All right, and you can also adjust the volume of individual tracks from here in arrangement view as well as turn tracks on and off, solo them, all the same stuff that you see in session view in arrangement view is just found here instead. All right, so let's say that you have your arrangement finalized, you're happy with your song. At that point, you can simply select the region of your arrangement, so select it from beginning to end and hit Command L to loop that section. All right, and once you've looped that selection, you can simply hit this top bar, which is movable, to select the area that you want to export and then next you're going to go file export audio video and you can export it as wave mp3 and here's all the settings to export your song and hit export and name your song my awesome song and save it somewhere you'll remember and ableton will automatically export all of your sounds all of your effects into an audio file and once this is exported, you can share that with your friends. You can upload it to SoundCloud or Spotify. Obviously, there's a lot more to learn and a lot more to do to finalize a track, but I wanted to showcase how it's done for you. All right, and we just scratched the surface, kind of got our toes wet inside of Ableton, but there is a lot more to learn. But I encourage you to just keep creating, keep making music and exploring the software and you will learn as you create. And here's a bonus tip for you. Inside Ableton, if you go into the View tab and hit Info, this little box appears in the bottom left corner, and this will actually explain to you any button and any feature you find inside of Ableton as you continue to learn the software. 
And hey, if you're just getting started making music or having trouble finishing projects, or just wanna get a glimpse inside my workflow, I've created a seven step pro producer roadmap to help you go from your very first ideas all the way to a finished master. So if you're interested, you can download that from the link below this video. I've jam packed it full of recording and mixing tips that I've learned over the years, and it's super handy to have around your studio. So I've really just covered the basics for you to get started in Ableton 11 and start making music now, but you obviously know there's more to learn. So if you're interested in learning more, go ahead and hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on my next video. All right, so let me know what are you most excited to work on in your music and what are you struggling with most in your music production? I'd love to hear from you. So drop a comment below and we'll see you in the next video.